Are you in the market for a new tripod? Maybe you're feeling overwhelmed by all the choices. Choosing the right tripod can be a daunting task. If you're in the market and you're considering a quality top of the line tripod, then you're on the right video. Stick around because I'm gonna share my experience and opinion about a truly unique and versatile tripod. The Pro Media Gear TR34 4LC is a center column tripod, but hold on, before you run away from a center column tripod, this tripod is so versatile, the center column is completely removable. Indeed, this tripod allows one to choose which they prefer after they buy the tripod, and you can go back and forth as desired. However, it does require the purchase of an additional accessory. Basically, you'll have to buy the Compact Apex for about 100 bucks. And honestly, that seems like a small price to pay for the versatility of being able to swap back and forth. And it's like having two tripods in one. Now, let me clear up a few things before we go any further. I've used the best and some of the worst tripods on the market. As a landscape photographer, after years of dragging tripods around the globe, I've come to a couple of conclusions about tripods in general. The first, you get what you pay for. A tripod is an investment that most photographers purchase once in a lifetime. And the second, as a landscape photographer that often hikes and backpacks into some difficult locations, a lightweight travel tripod is an absolute necessity. I wish I only needed one, but I just, I just can't seem to solve that dilemma with only one tripod. So basically, I use two Gitzos for my landscape photography. One is a travel tripod, and the other one is extra long with an Arca Swiss geared head. In full disclosure, I was contacted by Pro Media Gear about doing a review on one of their tripods. And although I wasn't in the market for a new tripod, I thought that some of you might be interested and maybe you could benefit from a review. Also, I thought that I might be able to strike a compromise between a travel tripod and a larger, or shall I say, a much longer tripod. There have been a number of times that I've needed that extra length. In fact, I recall one fairly recent composition in the Ozarks. I was out shooting on a hillside, and I had my travel tripod with me, and it just wasn't quite long enough to get the, the camera where it needed to be. And I'll leave a link to that video in the end in the video description. Anyway, my extra long Gitzo would have been perfect for this situation, but there was simply no way I could carry it. Not on this one mile, practically all downhill and then back out hike, or as my parents used to say, uphill both ways. Now. This tripod is only a loner, and I haven't had it out as long as I've had my Gitzos and other tripods, but I have had it out on the trail, hiking to a few locations with it strapped on my backpack. Indeed, I've given this tripod a full review, so let's get to it. Let's deal with the elephant in the room first. Price. Yes, there's no doubt about it, you're going to pay for this one. But you're going to pay a similar price for any high-quality tripod. Remember, you get what you pay for. And I'm not going to derail this review with how you should justify purchasing one of these, but I will tell you that in my experience with tripods, cheaper is not better, nor is it close to the same thing. Yes, one can take fantastic images with a cheap tripod, but you probably wouldn't be this far in the video if you weren't considering a high-quality tripod. With this price tag, the quality of materials, the craftsmanship, it's just, it's just a given. Indeed, the quality's on par with Gitzo or Really Right Stuff or any of the major brands. And the craftsmanship, it, it's just a work of art. The care and attention to detail in the machining and assembly, it's just nothing short of stunning. The quality is at the level that one would expect for the price point. Now, the usability, that's different. Based on one's experience, this is where it gets a bit subjective. We all have different preferences and, and we all have different perspectives, but I'll do my best to, to point out what I feel most people would want to know about this tripod. Now, I'm not delving into all the details of all the specifications. That's on Pro Media Gear's website. In fact, there are a dozen YouTube channels that have all this covered, so you can watch those. But I'm going to tell you just how well this thing performs in the field from a hands-on perspective. One of the most important features of this tripod is its height. At 87 inches, counting the center column, and about 91 inches with the ball head, this tripod can handle even the most demanding situations. With the center column removed, it's still quite long at around 74 inches with the ball head. Some people may ask themselves, why do I need a tripod that tall? I'm only 5'10". For those that may not realize it, the extra height of the tripod becomes super important when shooting from, a, from the side of a hill or an uneven surface. It's really not about how tall you are. The height of the camera is determined by the composition, not the height of the photographer. Trust me, for most landscape photographers, it's more likely that you'll need that extra height than not. The leg locks are very easily manipulated by 
pushing and pulling them in and out with your fingers. And winter gloves shouldn't be a problem with this either. One thing to note, these locks are not spring-loaded, so the legs just don't automatically lock in position. Depending on your preference, this may not be ideal. For me, I'm kind of indifferent about it. In fact, I may actually prefer these over the spring-loaded locks. These tend to, to make it easier to relocate and reposition the tripod when you're moving around because you're being finicky with the composition. On that note, the twist locks are aluminum, not rubber, and I'm kind of indifferent about that as well. I, I think I prefer rubber, and I think this depends on preference, but it's worth mentioning that aluminum twist locks, they're pretty cold without gloves in the wintertime. But whether they're aluminum or rubber, using these with gloves, it's just a non-issue. In any case, the twist locks are easily turned. And I would say that compared to other twist locks I've used, these don't have to be turned quite as far to release the leg sections. And once released, the leg sections slide down with ease. And it makes it easier for, for a quick setup. And this is so simple, just grab the twist locks, turn them with one hand, rotate, let gravity do the rest. In fact, just loosen the twist locks and turn the tripod upside down and the legs slide right back into place. While we're on the subject of the legs, this tripod has rubber feet with built-in stainless steel spikes. The usable length of the spikes, it's about an inch and three quarters. And as you may know, I prefer claw feet over spikes. In fact, I made a comparison video of spikes versus claws versus rubber feet. And if you're a landscape photographer, I highly recommend you watch this video. And I'll leave a link to that in the end in the video description. Regardless of my preferences, these feet are nice. Despite being stainless steel, dirt, sand, seawater, all these things are going to build up over time. And I think the concept is great, but all this buildup, it's going to make it more difficult to swap out the rubber feet with the spikes as time goes on. You could just leave the spikes out, but that may not be the best option and may not be practical for, for your situation. If this becomes a problem, you can always buy another set. One with the rubber feet and one with the spikes out. This way, you don't have to try to twist them apart while you're in the field. In any case, you'll definitely want to clean these feet after each use to minimize the buildup. Also, I'm not a huge fan of hiking with, the, with carrying the tripod with the spikes out. Should I slip or fall? Well, ouch. Honestly, if I owned this tripod, I would have a machinist manufacture kind of a threaded insert that would go into the end of the tripod leg and so that I could basically attach my claw feet because, you know, I'm a big fan of claw feet. I could just thread them into the rubber feet, but it would kind of look odd. But on that note, Pro Media Gear, if you're watching, I would highly recommend manufacturing a set of claw feet as an optional accessory. I'd rather buy it from Pro Media Gear at the time I bought the tripod. Just a thought. I do like how small the tripod packs down. The length is only about 25 inches, and with the center column removed, the width is just three inches. That's insane when considering the height of this thing. Without the center column, it only weighs about six pounds and that's with the BH-1 ball head. Truly, this is the part that I really like about this tripod. It's long enough to handle any situation that I throw at it, but light enough that I can hike with it. Short distances anyway. But as I always say when hiking, every ounce counts. Although this tripod is nowhere near as light as my travel tripod, it's a good compromise between my larger Gitzo, which weighs in at almost eight pounds with my Arca Swiss geared head, and my much smaller travel tripod, weighing in at a mere four pounds. I may not be able to carry this deep in the forest, but I could certainly deal with a mile or two. So, moving on to the ball head. I would say that the BH-1 is indeed quite unique. Most notably, its range of motion, and it's just smooth throughout all levels. It's easy to control. It's important to point out, though, that the BH-1 doesn't have a friction control knob, and this might be a deal breaker for some of you. However, that wasn't a concern for me. Honestly, I don't even think I would add one if I could. Let's just say I didn't notice it missing at all. Another great feature is there's no drop in this ball head whatsoever. Now, I've noticed that most ball heads have a tendency to drop slightly, especially when you're using a big heavy lens on it. But this ball head, once it's positioned and tightened down, that's it. It's locked solid and there's zero drop. It is big and it's bulky and it weighs in at about two pounds and that's heavy, but I guess it's not that bad when you consider how sturdy it is. It's built like a tank. It's a solid piece of hardware. 
Of course, it pairs perfectly with this tripod. However, if I remove the center column and swap it out with the smaller apex, the ball head just kind of hangs over slightly, but it doesn't look awkward or anything. It's just something to note. The clamp quality and usability is as good, if not better, than other clamps I've used, and it's on par with really right stuff clamps, and those are excellent clamps. It's a three inch diameter Arca Swiss type with a bubble level and a scale for precision placement of the camera. However, Pro Media Gear doesn't make a clamp with a quick release lever, at least not yet, which may be a concern for many people. Everyone seems to prefer the quick release lever. However, I've always used a screw knob. I like the secure feeling of being able to tighten down that knob to, to my specifications as opposed to a lever. On the bright side, this clamp is pretty versatile. It can be adapted to, to fit other tripods, even a Manfrotto ball head, which is nice because Manfrotto uses an anti-rotation kind of device or anti-rotation pins to secure the clamp. On my website, I wrote a review on Manfrotto's X-Pro ball head that shows this in more detail, and I'll leave a link to that article in the video description. Something to keep in mind, the BH1 ball head can be purchased with or without a clamp. So, one can purchase any clamp they desire to use with this particular ball head. On a couple of reviews I watched on YouTube, it looked like it paired pretty well with the Really Right Stuff uh, lever release clamp, so if you wanted to do that, it's an option. Lastly, this ball head is not only easy to use, but it's also fun to use, and maybe that's because it still seems new to me. Anyway, before I tell you whether or not I recommend this tripod, I think it's fair to mention that Pro Media Gear did provide me with an affiliate link, which means I get a percentage of, of the sale should you use the affiliate link. However, I've had several offers for, to do reviews in the past, and, but I've never taken anybody up on it. My intentions are to only review gear that I myself have considered purchasing, or have actually purchased. Indeed, I almost bought a Pro Media Gear tripod over my Gitzo Systematic 3 about, I don't know, years ago. But anyway, in a sea of choices, I know how difficult it is to make the right choice. Affiliate links do help keep me in the field making videos and doing what I love, landscape photography. However, you have my word that I will always provide honest reviews and recommendations. So, what's the bottom line? Do I recommend this tripod? Well, Yes. Yes, I do. The quality and the price point are on par with its competitors. And yes, it's a premium ball head and tripod, but it may not be for everyone. But if you're in the market for a premium tripod, this is one that you should add to your list for consideration. But deciding which one's for you, well, I have to leave that to you. As for myself, I would take the BH1 ball head over my Gitzo ball head without a second thought, but I wouldn't take it over my Arca Swiss geared head. I'm just saying. I imagine having all these tripods lined up in my office in the corner, and I'm heading out the door on my way to capture an award-winning image. Which one do I grab? There's no clear answer. It depends on where I'm going. If I'm heading out to the Ozark Forest to capture a few waterfalls with a relatively short hike, I think I would grab the Pro Media Gear without the center column, or with the center column, really doesn't matter. But if I'm backpacking out overnight to somewhere like Whitaker Point in the Ozark National Forest, it's going to be my Gitzo Travel Tripod. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to reach out to me, and I'll get back with you right away. Also, don't forget to check out those videos I mentioned about shooting on uneven surfaces and the other one on tripod feet, and I'll post links in the video description. If you like this video, make sure you hit that like button and consider subscribing to the channel. And as always, if I don't see you down the road, maybe I'll see you somewhere out on the trail.